Mediterranean drylands. Uh, the hypotheses uh, uh, informing our research practice uh, uh, are from basically four. Uh, the first is that desertification, drought, and land degradation emerge from complex socio ecological systems where biophysical and social drivers are structurally coupled. And uh, uh, so this calls for systemic innovation, and this is another important uh, hypothesis. <clears throat> uh, the third hypothesis is that soil fertility and water conservation are the preconditions for sustainable development in drylands. And the last but not the least important uh, uh, hypothesis is that the Mediterranean basin is a mosaic of contexts, different contexts. So tailored solutions are needed, not one fits for all. So the objectives of uh, this uh, project is that uh, are, are based, this project is based on living labs. Uh, so we established six living labs to engage stakeholders in the design and testing of nature-based solutions for increasing the resilience of endangered drylands, uh, basically in southern Europe, and to restore degraded ecosystems in hyperarid drylands, basically in northern Africa. Uh, so the idea is that uh, land recover. Uh, can generate investments and business opportunities. So we would like to couple, to combine the investments and the business opportunities with improvement of soil fertility. And this is based on improving the stakeholders' capacity to respond to the crisis. So uh, the project involves 16 partners uh, from Northern Africa and Southern Europe, uh, basically Spain, Italy, Greece in Southern Europe, and Egypt, uh, Palestine as a, an associate partner, uh, Tunisia and Morocco in Northern Africa. Uh, uh, there are research organizations, but also enterprises, uh, private enterprises and NGOs. Uh, this is the rationale for, for the project. As I said, it is based, the pillar one is on living lab and the pillar two is on co-researching. Uh, so the idea is that co-researching between uh, scientists and uh, stakeholders, we generate new uh, social learning spaces to hybridize scientific and local knowledge uh, to generate innovative practical solutions that are being tested and reassessed uh, in, uh, the living, in each living lab. Uh, so to test not just the ecological uh, effectiveness, but also the social impacts. Uh, basically, this process is to remove the barriers for innovation, uh, development, and for the scaling out. Uh, ideally, from each living lab, uh, new business opportunities will emerge. And this can be uh, disseminated and scaled out uh, outside of the six uh, living labs uh, towards systemic change for sustainable land and water management and structurally coupling the new business opportunities and soil uh, fertility improvement. So the dryland resilience uh, in southern Europe uh, that we are addressing uh, include uh, three living labs. One is in Sardinia. And uh, it is uh, focusing on uh, silvopastoral systems, agro silvopastoral systems, uh, very similar to the, the ESAS uh, in Spain and the Montado in Portugal. And uh, uh, the, another case study living lab is in Esauria in Morocco in the Argan uh, forest, uh, where the aridity index is very low. Uh, another living lab is in Messinia in Greece, uh, in olive orchards, which are very common in, in uh, Southern Europe and Northern Africa, uh, with an aridity index of 0 0.5. And uh, another is in Valencia <clears throat> uh, on the forest, uh, with uh, using uh, pine forest, using the cafe approach to address sustainable forest management and combat forest abandonment. While the dryland restoration uh, living labs are based uh, in Africa, in Northern Africa, one is in Matru in Egypt, uh, where it's a desert area uh, where uh, we are implementing water harvesting uh, and uh, monitoring uh, water harvesting uh, 
um, techniques uh, using also integrating with uh, my, uh, use of microbial consortia for improving soil fertility and improving the resilience of uh, cultivated plants and the smart agriculture to increase plant water use efficiency, drought resilience and productivity. In Tunisia, uh, we are working uh, in, Medellin, in the area of Medellin in southern Tunisia with a very low uh, aridity index. Um, to uh, store water in the ground uh, through managed aquifer recharge um, to use this water for uh, agricultural irrigation. And in Esauria, in the Argan forest, we are also testing the subsurface water retention uh, technology for Argan forest restoration. Uh, the project is also promoting uh, cross-cutting uh, technologies, particularly those based on microbial-based uh, uh, biotechnological solutions for uh, exploring uh, soil rhizosphere and root associated microbial communities, uh, selecting microbial strains uh, with beneficial traits for uh, crops, and testing small scale inocula and formulation in uh, trifolium and uh, lolium. Uh, this uh, is also uh, uh, aiming to develop uh, new protocols, simple protocols. Uh, that are accessible to local uh, small enterprises, even uh, women cooperatives, for instance, for the production of microbial inoculants from local substrates, uh, which have uh, relatively low techn technological needs and uh, little investments, handy formulation technologies, and uh, very uh, easy quality control. Another cross-cutting activity is the high throughput phenotyping, which has been implemented by CNR IPSP in Florence, uh, with their devices uh, located in different parts of Italy to uh, screen with uh, uh, these phenotyping devices uh, a large number of genotypes of different crops. Uh, one uh, uh, important question that we are trying to uh, uh, reply uh, with Salamed is uh, to test if agriculture is possible in hyperarid lands. And the challenge is that uh, we uh, try to address the problem of aquifers overexploitation in Northern Africa. Uh, by uh, using the, uh, the only water that is available from the occasional rainfall, maybe one or two rainfall can represent 95% of the total annual rainfall in this area. And this uh, water very often uh, goes down to the sea. So uh, the idea is to harvest this water through in the ground. Uh, through these uh, managed aquifer recharge systems, which require a lot of uh, preliminary geological study, hydrogeological studies, uh, for instance, the use of electrical resistivity tomography uh, to assess uh, soil conductivity, and then topographic method to estimate the surface and the relief of deposited uh, sediments. Uh, in integrating this with modeling, uh, the SWOT model in this case in Tunisia, uh, the idea is to restore uh, sustainable agriculture in uh, this hyperarid land through uh, this uh, managed aquifer research, which offer uh, business opportunities and prevent from land abandonment, which is a big problem in this area. A lot of young people is migrating from uh, this area because of uh, lack of job. And uh, the possibility to outscale uh, of uh, uh, this technology in similar Mediterranean drylands where drought, migrations, and land abandonment are leading to land degradation. Another uh, important question that we are addressing is, uh, can we improve reforestation efficiency in desert areas threatened by drought, uh, soil erosion, and overgrazing? And uh, this is the UNESCO site of the forest, uh, the Argan Forest in Western Morocco, which is a very important site. Uh, where the challenge is land degradation due to overgrazing, climate change, and demographic dynamics. So the actions that we are testing in this living lab are based on the argon reforestation activities to combat desertification using uh, subsurface water retention technologies. Uh, so impermeable, waterproof, uh, biodegradable plastics, which are placed on the soil surface to prevent from a water percolation and nutrient leaching after seedling transplanting. So after uh, some months, uh, this uh, uh, plastic is uh, biodegraded and the plant can uh, develop uh, uh, the roots uh, beyond. So these are some slides uh, illustrating the processes, very manual process 
in a very degraded land to restore uh, the Argan ecosystem, which is uh, threatened by desertification. Um, <clears throat> The Argan forest plays a vital role in combining, uh, in combating desertification while offering fundamental economic opportunities, particularly for women. Almost 90% of the rural economy in the region is dependent on the Argan agroforestry system. And so the lessons learned from this living lab process uh, will feed the, the outscaling of, of this process. Uh, finally, another, uh, well, this is just, I mean, an illustration of some of the case studies. Uh, another question is, can we improve the irrigation efficiencies while, uh, while minimizing the aquifer exploitation and mitigating soil degradation in the olive orchards of Greece? So the challenge here is that uh, olive uh, is a very important business there, and there is a sort of overexploitation of olive growth uh, leading to soil degradation and reduced productivity, but also over exploitation of groundwater and inefficient use of irrigation, which is leading to water scarcity, uh, which is in competition with civil uses, particularly in tourist areas. So the actions here under test are based on the use of more efficient irrigation technologies and the implementation of soil conservation practices. Uh, using uh, possibly uh, also organic farming methods. In this case study, we have two participatory experiments, one based on uh, soil erosion assessment of different uh, soil management uh, with or without cover crops or with or without herbicides um, uh, and with the sustainable irrigation management systems based on uh, uh, drip irrigation. So we are comparing rain-fed or uh, irrigation, which is driven by um, uh, phenological phases. So uh, it's a sort of supplementary irrigation, uh, only uh, which is given depending on the phenology of the plant. So, so considering the, the real uh, needs of uh, irrigation needs. Uh, compared with the business as usual irrigation practices in which water is not uh, used uh, very efficiently. Uh, the olive production, olive oil production here is a major contributor to the local economy and the Messinian olive oil is widely renowned for its high quality. So there is also here an outscaling potential. There are 8 million hectares of olive orchards in the Mediterranean. So uh, there is a lot of potential for e exporting uh, the results of this living lab as well. Uh, for the uh, uh, dryland restoration, I already said that the last slide is uh, that uh, this project uh, is quite ambitious in uh, generating new modalities for connecting science and users, small and medium enterprises and NGOs with decision makers. Uh, we are very proud to have on board uh, uh, three uh, private uh, uh, small uh, uh, enterprises, Land Agritech from Tunisia, Abinsula from uh, Spain and Primo Principio from uh, Sardinia. Uh, we are also collaborating with uh, uh, different uh, international organizations like CIA, Ambari and the FAO-RME in uh, in Egypt, uh, particularly with FAO, uh, we are outscaling uh, uh, the outcome from uh, uh, the different living lab through the farmer's field school uh, uh, approach that FAO is implementing in all Northern African and Middle East. Uh, we also collaborate with uh, uh, an NGO in Palestine, uh, We World, GVC We World and with DesertNet International, which is uh, another uh, civil society organization accredited to the UNCCD. So the idea is to uh, work on capacity development, generate uh, business opportunity, which, is, which are uh, structurally coupled uh, with improving soil fertility and matchmaking between problem and owners and solution providers. So thank you for your attention. I hope I was uh, uh, on time and uh, that Salamed uh, is open to any uh, collaboration uh, with other uh, research projects like uh, those I have heard about in, in this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pierpaolo, for your presentation.